This is Dennis McMahon and welcome to Positively Vermont. And I'm very pleased today that uh, we are going to be exploring an organization called the Women Business Owners Network. And here on behalf of the organization is a member of the board, uh, Marie Eddy, who is also the founder and CEO of Eddy Career Services uh, located in Hinesburg, Vermont. Uh, welcome, Marie. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, first, tell us a, a little bit about yourself and uh, your, your background in business and, and what, you're, what you do today. Sure. Um, well, I am a solopreneur. Uh, so I am a career consultant. Um, I like to say I'm a career coach because I'm one of those rah, rah, encouraging types of people. And uh, what I, I started my business in 2018 after having worked in education for 27 years. And uh, mainly I started it to pursue my passion because I love career coaching. And so that's what I do now through uh, my business, Eddie Career Services. That's great. And uh, tell us about the Women Business Owners Network itself, a little bit of the history sure. and some of the, the people who might've been involved in it at the beginning and maybe some of the people today. Sure, sure. Well, Women Business Owners Network started in 1984. Uh, the mission of WBON is to encourage and support women who own and operate businesses to foster economic stability of women-owned businesses and to improve the climate for entrepreneurship in the state of Vermont. And it started in 1984 because one of the obstacles that women were experiencing when they uh, started to, well, when they um, wanted to start a business was um, lack of capital. You know, a lot of businesses, you need startup monies. And believe it or not, in the 1980s, in the early 80s, women could not get loans for their businesses without a husband's signature. So, and that wasn't too long ago. Yeah. I mean, within our lifetime. Right. So, uh, so women who were frustrated by that aspect of starting their own business got together and said, well, we need to advocate. And the best way to advocate is to come together as a group because more, uh, more voices are more powerful. So that was kind of the impetus to start WBON. But really what WBON has become is a support network for women business owners. Uh, I would say about two thirds of the uh, women business owners in Vermont are solopreneurs and um, solopreneurship can be kind of isolating. So to have the resource of an organization like WBON uh, that has monthly chapter meetings where women come together to network and also to learn from each other. Uh, there's always a speaker each month at the chapter meetings. And then there are two conferences a year through WBON. There's the full day spring conference, which is coming up this June 7th. It's gonna be virtual this year due to the pandemic. But the spring conference, conference is usually focused on professional development with a lot of great speakers and workshops. And then there's a half day fall conference in Vermont, which is statewide, that is more focused on um, networking and uh, just getting together. Because again, there's power in numbers, but there's also support. So WBON is like a support network for women business owners. Could you tell us uh, about the, the uh, category of women business owners? Would that also include, uh, include uh, professionals who operate as single practitioners or maybe in partnerships with other people, including men? Yeah. To give you an idea of some of the women who are members. Um, okay, so some of the ones who own their own business. So like solopreneurs, uh, some work in body work like reflexologists, massage therapists. There are some photographers and graphic designers, um, a lot of coaches and consultants like myself. 
there are female business owners in finance, like accountants, CPAs, bookkeepers. Uh, there are realtors, artists, virtual assistants, and social media consultants. The social media is critical these days to promoting your business. Um, everyone in business needs to be tech savvy. Yeah. So we have several women who uh, run businesses helping other people become tech savvy. And, um, but not all of us are uh, solopreneurs. There are several members who, who employ other people. Uh, some of those companies that they run are like in this food and, food and beverage business automotive repair, public relations, uh, women who work for companies where the majority of the leaders, of the leadership are women. So um, it's a broad range. I mean, we do cover every single, I would say we're, we're uh, a pretty wide ranging organization. That's great. Could you give us an idea of maybe what percentage or what sector of the economy uh, in the state of Vermont is owned by women? Uh, yeah, good question. Um, it's going to sound small, but it's really big. In Vermont, about seven, a little more than 7% of the businesses are owned by women. Uh, that is twice the percentage of nationally women, uh, women owned businesses, because nationally it's like three and a half percent. That's all. So, yeah, yeah, um, which is, again, a reason why you need to come together and support each other, you know? Um, so, yeah, about 7% of the businesses in Vermont are owned by women. And in terms of, of the term ownership, I, I realize I get a little legal when, when I, I, I hear that word. Does that include people who might not be the entire owners or? have some equity in a business or people who are in management and not necessarily uh, the main stockholder or owner? There are some, um, there are some members who co-own a business, uh, usually with their spouse. Mm -hmm. You know, there are, there are a lot of husband and wife teams that come together to own a business. And uh, whether or not those are, you know, I, I think they're still called women-owned businesses. You know, if your name is on the title. Interesting. And what about professionals? Uh, you know, the percentage of maybe doctors, lawyers, accountants, uh, other type, and like yourself, uh, other types of consultants who, who uh, operate on their own uh, or maybe with a small amount of parts. Uh, what's the uh, demographics of that? If you, if you, know? Um, you know, I don't have it. I don't have the numbers handy on like consultants, uh, professionals, but I would say, you know, I recently I read a report that was produced by Visa and um, it, it just came out in 2019. And um, I'm, I'm trying to remember some of the statistics in that about, oh, you know what, numbers, they don't stay in my mind. Mm -hmm. I, I just always get, I, I just get a little sidetracked with, with equity and that's my, my legal thinking. That's one of the, the problems. But uh, getting back to uh, this percentage, I mean, uh, why is Vermont uh, gratefully ahead of the national average with uh, women ownership? Oh, maybe it's because of organizations like WBON who are here to support and help uh, women business owners. Uh, we're invested in the economic viability of women-owned businesses. We we actually, you know, there are a lot of coalitions within Vermont. A lot of uh, organizations. Uh, to give you a for instance, um, during the pandemic, you know, when the PPP loans were uh, distributed the public policy committee of WBON wanted to ensure that women got an equitable portion of those loans. And they uh, partnered with the Main Street Alliance Vermont and also with 
Center for Women in Enterprise to not only educate women on the loans and how to get the loans, but actually sat down and helped people fill out the applications and make sure all of the uh, paperwork was in order for them to be able to um, obtain some of that money. That's great, because half the battle with, with a lot of federal programs is having the right paperwork. And, right. But there are, there are people who do that, and that's all they do, to try to help people get that kind of money, uh, grant writers, grant assistants. It's there. Yeah. It's, the trick is getting it, um, you know. But that sounds really exciting. Um, and um, the other thing that, that I think maybe all business owners have, but do women have any particular uh, issues with uh, uh, support, with not only, not only with business or good with clients, but dealing with uh, environmental matters, regulations, uh, transportation, all of these things that uh, businesses have to deal with in order to be successful. Uh, yeah. How do you help well, that out? Well, like, uh, let me give you a for instance. Um, historically, uh, women had difficulty finding mentors. You know, people and, and mentors are critical for professional development. You know, mentors provide the wisdom of their experience, but they also provide access to influencers. You know, so historically, women had difficulty finding other women who could um, mentor them. And that's where WBON comes in because they they not only provide women with mentors, but they also provide a referral network for women. So uh, part of what we do is support. And uh, speaking of mentorship, uh, recently WBON initiated a new program for members called WBON Plus. So WBON Plus is an initiative by the organization to provide mentorship in a small group. Uh, so a small group of members come together, they meet regularly for a short period of time. Um, they share their challenges, they share their best practices, they provide encouragement to each other. It's kind of like giving each woman an informal board of advisors. So uh, that's one of these support op opportunities uh, through membership in Women Business Owners Network. What, what about networking? How, um, that seems to be so important for any kind of business, but how do you manage that, uh, particularly for your members' network? Well, we have, um, every chapter has a monthly meeting. Uh, and so that's an opportunity to network. Now, the funny thing was during the pandemic, of course, everyone went virtual. And the chapters started holding their monthly meetings virtually. And the beauty was that members in the Burlington chapter could access Rutland's uh, you know, monthly meetings. And um, same thing with Williston. You know, people were going around and whatever Sunday good they could go to because they were a member of WBON, they could go to other monthly meetings, whereas Typically, you wouldn't get in your car and drive an hour and a half for an hour and a half meeting, you know, if you didn't have to. So it's really opened up the opportunities, I'd say. And uh, speaking of which, we are kind of collaborating with Main Street Alliance Vermont in our spring conference this year, June 7th, in getting the word out to people because going virtual means that people can access from even outside of Vermont if they want to come to our conference. And we have seen that. So it's a good thing. Tell, um, tell us a little more about, about uh, uh, this uh, idea of, of, you say you have chapters? Uh, yes. Tell us about the chapter network, how that was set up or is set up. Yeah, well, uh, they're all set up very similarly because we follow, we um, chapter, organizers get together monthly and support each other too. It, you know, they share ideas for speakers. Um, they share ideas for topics and they share ideas for getting the word out. 
to people because WBON members can go to chapter meetings uh, for free as part of their membership, but they're also open to guests and guests can actually come to two meetings for free. Um, after that, there's like a nominal fee uh, to attend a chapter meeting, but essentially it's set up like this. People get, women get together. Um, there is an introductory period, like the first 15 minutes, everyone introduces themselves and their business. So there's that networking piece. And then there's a speaker, um, question and answer period afterwards. And then usually there's a little more networking at the end. So every chapter meeting is pretty much set up like that. And before the, the pandemic, you actually physically met. Oh yeah, we met in person, yeah. But I guess as a latent function now of this pandemic, the virtual meetings, you can get people from all over the world even attending. Right, and as a matter of fact, about three months ago, I was attending one of the chapter meetings and there was a woman from England. Mm -hmm. she, she saw it somewhere and thought the topic sounded interesting and she joined us. That's great. So yeah, it is really, that is gonna be one of those like benefits from the pandemic. We're even, we're even talking about keeping a chapter, at least one chapter virtual mm -hmm. to provide that opportunity because people have seen the benefits. Yeah, so. also the the, um, the ease of it I, it's just can't be uh, overestimated. Uh, and it's amazing how, and the other funny thing is when people check into these virtual things, they may run into people they haven't seen for years, but knew in the, let's say a past life or something. Yeah, have you ever done that? You've been in a workshop, I just did it two days ago, and you see someone you know, and you send them a private chat. Right. And they're like, hey, haven't seen you in a while. So, and, and, you know, that's kind of what I miss about in-person meetings because uh, A, you have an opportunity to hand out your business card mm -hmm. and we do that, we, we put out our business cards at monthly meetings, um, but B, you know, after the meeting ends, there's that informal time where you can get together with someone you haven't seen for a while. Mm -hmm. and, and that networking is, is crucial to business too. The, I suppose that's something women business owners lacked uh, up until recent days, you know, the old chamber of commerce or old boys network or whatever well, male groups they used to hang out in. You know, again, you hit the nail on the head. There were some obstacles for women in the beginning. Um, and, and let's just take the example of golf. The role of golf courses in business opportunities. Um, a lot of people would play golf because a lot of business happened on the golf course and afterwards in the clubhouse. And a lot of golf courses were not open to women members. You know, it might it might have been the wives of members could play on Saturday between what, you know, nine and one or something like that. <laughs> Uh, um, but now, and even Burlington Country Club, they didn't allow women members until the late 1970s. So um, they had women golfers because my, my mom played <laughs> there, but my father was the member. <laughs> See? That's amazing. I don't think a lot of people realize the barriers, the, what are they called, the glass ceiling or something like that? Uh, yeah. Because so much, oh, here's another story. You know, years ago, I read this article. It was written by a female engineer. And, you know, engineering is very non-traditional for females. It's getting better, but there was a lot of obstacles in being a female in a male-dominated occupation. So, anyways, this woman wrote, her name was Frances, you know, Frances with an E-S at the end. Uh, she started working at this engineering firm that had a big, big firm. And the IT guy set her up with an email address. And as a joke, he wrote frank at companyxyz.com. Okay. So the two of them had a big laugh over it. And then he created one that was Francis, yeah. you know, at companywxyz.com. Now, she started, every once in a while, she'd look at Frank's 
email because it was live. Yeah. And she noticed something. Frank was getting uh, emails that talked about out of work networking opportunities, uh, professional development conferences, and Francis, she was not getting those emails. Mm. Isn't that sad? Wow, that, that, that's, a, yeah. that's a major development there, a major, yeah. it's like a study. Uh, and, and, and a lot of women got discouraged and dropped out of engineering because of that. Now, now I read that article like 20 years ago. I will let you know that I just read in that 2019, 2019 article by Visa, they said um, in the last five years, no, 79% of American female entrepreneurs that were surveyed for that article reported that they felt more empowered um, than they did five years previous. So 79% of women today feel more empowered than they did less than a decade ago. So things, they are changing. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, let me yeah. ask, you, ask you this, um, a couple of, uh, of items. Uh, one of the things you, you are uh, involved in is legislation and, and public yeah. policy. And uh, our legislature is still in session. Uh, Congress is still in session. Tell us about some of the legislative initiatives uh, that you're working on right now. Yeah. Um, well, of course, the PPP part was very big. Um, also, last year, because so many of our membership are solopreneurs, and they were being hit hard by the pandemic, um, they worked with the legislature to clarify them as independent contractors so they could access unemployment. You know, there, there was, I don't know the particulars about the um, legislation, but uh, a lot of the public policy committee's work centered around ensuring that um, there was equity and that women had access to funds to keep themselves afloat. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the newest stuff. But um, also, you know, one of the obstacles, I think, or even one of the reasons why women become business owners is that work-life balance. You know, what do I do with my children? Um, and childcare, ensuring ac a adequate access to childcare is a biggie. So, um, also, the Fair Pay Act, uh, when that passed in early 2000s, I know we were championing that. And also, um, what, mo more recently, the, let me see here, um, paid leave. You know, paid leave is important, that whole childcare piece. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you something. Way back when, when I was a college student, I majored in English because A, I loved reading and B, I loved books. Mm -hmm. And my, this is what I envisioned doing after I graduated, owning a bookstore so that I could have my baby in a playpen in the store with me. So very naive thinking on my part because we all know that children remain babies for a little, little period of time. Um, but I was imagining combining work and family as the ideal. And for some women, that's why they start their own business. Uh, so we recognize that one of the obstacles for women in business is childcare. So anything we can do to advocate for them is a big piece of the pie. That's great. Well, uh, we're, we're now at the beginning, we're actually getting towards the middle of May. Uh, can you just project for our viewers uh, what the next few months look like in terms of activities and, and things you want to make uh, people aware of that uh, they can participate. Sure. Well, again, like I mentioned before, we have our annual spring conference. It's a full day series of professional development that is happening this year. It's happening virtually on June 7th uh, from 830 to 430. And uh, just to give you some of the um, highlights, the keynote speaker is Precious Williams of Perfect Pitches. And uh, we have the EndNote keynote is Cassie Morse of Northfield Farmer's Market. 
and she'll be talking about how pharma, farmers were pivoting to online uh, to keep their businesses afloat. Um, so essentially, it's going to be a day-long virtual gathering. There's going to be small group breakout and peer-to-peer -peer networking uh, sessions. And uh, the title, the theme for this year for our spring conference is Building Back Better. What comes next for rural small businesses? That's great. Because you're tying in with the uh, agriculture, uh, we being an agricultural state. And uh, I know uh, we've had... Uh, Secretary on uh, discussing uh, that uh, type of information and uh, Anson Tebbets and uh, all people. Uh, that's where you can get a lot of uh, networking just even being virtual, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. So that's coming. And again, we are uh, partnering with Main Street Alliance Vermont to get the word out. Uh, we do a lot of um, coalitions with other organizations, VBSR and uh, CWE, you know. So. Tell us what they are because a lot of people might not oh, know. Yeah, uh, but the Vermont language. businesses for social responsibility, you know, B Corps, and also uh, Center for Women in Enterprise. Uh, two great organizations here. That's great. Well, tell us uh, what you need. One of the things we like to do on Positively Vermont is give our guests an opportunity uh, to. Uh, speak to the general public or to legislators or anyone else who's listening as to what your needs are immediately, uh, whether it be membership or other kinds of support. So why don't you let us know something about that? I guess, you know, being on this uh, program, I'm going to say one of our needs is getting the word out about our organization, because we are a support network for women business owners, and we are a resource for women business owners. And, you know, we believe in gender parity and, and being an inclusive Vermont economy. So anything we can do to support women business owners, and there are a lot in agriculture too. I didn't mention that before, but yes, a lot of women business owners in agriculture, but mainly join, become a member of WBON. That's my message. That's great. And, and people who, maybe want to become women business owners, that next generation. Uh, do you have anything specific about, let's say a, a woman is in college or, or maybe uh, working at a certain job or in agriculture or whatever, uh, what can she look forward to and what can she get from your organization? Um, well, I would say uh, seek advice, reach out. We love to help each other. Um, so as a matter of fact, that's what I did in 2018, when I started my business, the very first thing I did was I, uh, reached out to three women I knew who were consultants to ask about pricing. How do I set up my pricing? Um, later on, I had an opportunity to, um, be a keynote speaker and I reached out to a couple other women saying, okay, how much should I charge? You know, so seeking advice. We are here for people and we're ready, willing, and able to help others. I mean, our mission is to ensure that women businesses thrive. That's great. So, That's great. And you have a website. Uh, tell us what else, how people can get in touch with you. Sure. WBON.org. And do you that have the website? And do you have any office hours or any other contact information or anything like that? Uh, for the organization, not necessarily office hours. Well, that's on the website. They can get that, that type of uh, information. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I'll tell you, I, I, this has really been very informative. And uh, I, I know that uh, our listeners will and viewers will also. Uh, but let me give you this opportunity to, uh, to conclude. Maybe uh, give us a parting thought uh, to everyone who's watching. Well, I just want to say that uh, WBON, Women Business Owners Network, uh, is a wonderful organization. Uh, we do provide support and resources, and uh, everyone needs help in their professional development. And we are one of those opportunities here in Vermont. That's great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my guest today on Positively Vermont 
has been Marie Eddy, uh, who's the founder and CEO of Eddy Career Services in Hinesburg, uh, and also a member of the board of the Women Business Owners Network. And we're going to provide the information uh, with the website and all of that material. I want to wish you the best of luck and thank you for appearing on Positively Vermont. And thank, thank you, you all. Thank, thank you all for watching.